Hey, this is Naltzer, and we're checking out Tier 10 Destroyers. This is the new matchup format show. It might change, it might morph, depending on your feedback. But the idea is compare and contrast the ships, highlight their strengths, highlight their weaknesses, and hopefully this will allow you to get every little edge you can in a one versus one matchup and make sure you're better informed when going up against these ships. So, first up, we're going to look at the main battery for all six. And yes, I'm saying six because I'm including the Sinyang. The Pan-Asian ship will be coming soon. Those stats are subject to change. They are work in progress, but it's fun to compare. So, first up, 127 to 130 millimeter gun. Very comparable. All of these guns benefit from basic firing training, expert marksmen, advanced firing training. They're all classified as small caliber but importantly and oh yeah inertia fuse high explosive too but importantly they don't suck like 100 millimeters for the akizuki so they don't and i would highly discourage you from picking up inertia fuse high explosive they don't need that skill it's just four points that honestly you won't notice that much but i just thought i should highlight Inertia Fuse High Explosive only takes 1% of your fire chance away because of this, the size of the gun caliber, but it's just not needed. You'll notice that the, the Soviets do 130 millimeters. The Gearing, the Sinyang, the Shima, they do about 1800 HE, 2100 AP. The Soviets are about 1900 HE, 2400 or 2300 AP. Very comparable damage per shot. The rate of fire and the amount of guns is where they're all different. Three for the Gearing, the Sinyang, four for the Grozo Void, the Z52, five for the Hubbardosk, and 5.74 for the Shima. The Shima's just awful with the gun systems. The Gearing, the Grozo Void, they have their guns situated to a forward attack. The Hubbardosk is balanced, the Shima is in the rear. I believe the Sinyang is forward as well because it is American in nature. And the Z-52 is also forward. I'm, I'm, yeah, Z-52 forward. So what that means is Gearing, Grosso, Void, Z-52, and the Sinyang are going to be pushing forward. And they'll have most of their guns pushing forward. If you were using your guns, you could maneuver and stay very thin. You didn't have to rely on showing a ton of your side to use all your guns effectively. You do give up a little bit for the Hoborosk, but... The velocity is where it doesn't really matter. Gearing and the Sinyang are great brawlers, very close in. The Z-52's AP is exceptional. If you get a broadside destroyer, use the AP, because you will blow that sucker up quick. The Grozovoy and the Hobodosk, they stay at range, and they are really happy being at range. Now, you could play the Grozovoy as a little bit of a hybrid, but the Hobodosk is absolutely a gunboat only now. They've killed off the torpedo systems, and the concealment is awful. You'll see, you'll see. So gearing, Sinyang, play it straight. Uh, there's no real reason to get advanced firing training unless you're doing like an anti-air build. For the Grozovoy and the Hubrosk, you want advanced firing training, and you want to exploit your range and your velocity. You can't use the range module, though, for the Soviet destroyers, so keep that in mind. Everything, everything else can. The main battery for all the ships is very comparable, but it definitely influences the playstyle for the Soviets. They will fire outside of smoke at max range, and they'll be able to avoid shots and hit their shots because of that velocity. Whereas the Gearing, the Sinyang, even the Z-52 to some extent, it's a little bit harder to hit the shot. And a lot of times you don't want to fire your gun at all unless you're concealed in some manner either by being behind an island or being in smoke. The other half, the other significant half of every tier 10 destroyer is the torpedo systems. And the first thing you'll notice is the Shimakaze's got everyone beat on size. If size and the amount is the only thing that mattered, Shimakaze would run away with it. 16 millimeter and 15 of them at that, that's huge. That's about 22 to 24,000 damage per torpedo versus the 533, which is uh, about 15, give or take. 
And everything else is 15, obviously. But that damage output is not the only thing that dictates whether you succeed as a destroyer sending torpedoes or not. It is the range, the reload, and the detectability of those torpedoes. We've got the gearing coming in at 16.5, which is fantastic. 1.4 kilometer detection. This is the range that the enemy will spot the torpedo without any enhancements from their end. So they could pick up vigilance to make this an easier spot. They could have target acquisition. They could have hydroacoustic turned on. They could have their aircraft overhead. This is the base range that everyone will spot your torpedoes if they haven't invested anything into detecting them. So 1.4 is pretty good. Grosso Void 1.3 is, again, pretty good. 0 0.6 for the Hubbardovsk, but look at that range. Six kilometers. So you, this is a ship that cannot have better concealment than six. So it will be spotted, or it will have to be in smoke behind an island to use the torpedoes. So 0 0.6 is completely reasonable. Just be aware, you will not pick them up you will have to predict the torpedo if this ship is within six. That's one thing that I've made a mistake at. They recently took away 10 kilometer range torpedoes and they gave them sort of this buff to their short range. I'm not, I don't really see it that often. Just want you to know, Shimakaze has three different torpedoes. It's got a 12 kilometer, a 20 kilometer, and an eight kilometer. I discourage the 20, absolutely, used to be so powerful, but it is just a shadow of what it used to be. It has a detectability of 2.5 kilometers, the 20 kilometers. That is horrible. That is unusable. Couple that with vigilance, couple that with target acquisition. These torpedoes are going to be picked up three plus kilometers away. So don't touch the 20 on the Shimakaze. It's 12 or 8, and that's about it. The Z-52, 1.4, Sinyang, 1.5. The reload is pretty comparable between all of them, except for two. Shimakaze is 150, and the Z-52 is 90. The Shimakaze has 15 torpedoes, though, and this is what I think is a good strategy to compensate for that terrible rearm. Only send two of the three sets, keep one in reserve, and use that one roughly about 50% of the reload of the first two. And it feels better than sending all three. You don't need 15 of these torpedoes in the water. You need to be able to use your torpedoes when the window opens up. Z-52 on the other hand, it only has eight total, but the rearm is so low, I can get it down to 68 seconds fully buffed. Z-52 is a torpedoing monster. It feels so fantastic to use those torpedoes. It's so hilarious that that is the best add-in, but the rearm, the range, the detection, and the hydroacoustic allow it to be aggressive with its torpedoes. Now, a overlooked aspect, honestly, to destroyers is their ability to fight off aircraft. The AA defense is, how do I put this, usually really crappy for destroyers. They can invest in advanced firing training, manual AA, they can get a basic firing training, and the gearing slash grozovoy can equip defensive fire. And now, I, I don't know if the Sinyan can equip defensive fire. I'm not 100% on that one yet, but AA is just something overlooked. For the Soviets, you're sort of already building into this whole AA package, so it, it makes sense to align it with some defensive fire. That's where the Grozovoy is honestly pretty cool. It can absolutely be pretty effective AA protection if you are running with a aircraft carrier in your division and you're looking to have a DD, but DDs always get focused down by some aircraft carrier, well, guess what? I would pick Gearing, Grozovoy, or Hobrovsk. Those three seem to be doing very well. Also the Z-52, but the way you build a Z-52 doesn't really align that well with the AA protection, and it can't use defensive fire. The Shima is complete garbage. Just hover over that all day if you're an aircraft carrier. 
You have no chance of avoiding it, Shima. You need to find someone who can help you if you want to survive. Okay? But yeah. Gearing, Grozovoy, Hobros, Z52. They all have plus and minuses. I personally think that defensive fire is really nice. You might have seen that in this game, this Hobrovsk was able to dodge the torpedoes, and that was because of the speed. We'll get to the speed, but generally, playing a DD is not going to have a lot of fun with aircraft carriers, and that's part of the reason why Wargaming chose to omit the aircraft carrier from competitive. They just do a better job at detecting targets than the DD, and they basically kill every DD on site. Keep them spotted the entire time. It's a real challenge, but I felt like I needed to cover the AA defense just so you understand the differences. Now, let's get to the maneuverability of the ships. The maneuverability is pretty fair between them all. You've got the Soviets that have pretty awesome speed, honestly. 43 knots for the Hobrovsk. That's ridiculous. 39.5 for the Grozovoy. Shima is 39. We've got the Z-52, which is 37.5, and then the gearing in the Sinyang, 36. So what does this dictate? Well, speed is one of the factors in avoiding damage at range. The Hubbardovsk does this better than anyone else. You could literally just put it into sixth gear and avoid the shots, whereas everyone else basically has to maneuver. You pick up your speed signal flag and you're even faster. Speed boost for the Hubbardovsk. I would absolutely recommend don't waste your time turning to dodge. Stay near max range and go full speed. You will dodge way more than you could possibly do with that rudder. Because look at that rudder. That Hobbitosk rudder is a piece of crap. 11.1. .1. The reason it's so crappy is Hobbitosk commanders were sort of skimping on their rudder. They were picking up concealment, the module. And they were having a pretty good rudder. The rudder was like 5.6 or 5.8, and they were doing okay. But Wargaming was like, whoa, you're picking up concealment, you're picking all this stuff up? No, we're going to make you have to commit. And now you basically can't pick up the concealment module because that rudder is so bad. You have to improve it. You've got to pick the steering mod, and you also need to pick the rudder shift mod just to have a chance of turning. The turn radius... You know, some of them are, they're pretty close. They're all very close, except for the Hobrovsk and the two Americans. The two Americans are just, like, really good. The Sinyang, obviously, former American ship. So it's going to be very good at avoiding torpedoes, brawling. Whereas the Hobrovsk, the Grozovoy, the Z-52, they really prefer to be back a little bit from the targets. Shimikaze, very okay. Very okay. Rudder... Everything is responsive except for one. Now, the Grozovoy and the Z-52 are a little sluggish, but it's nothing like the Hubbardovsk. So, I can't complain when I look at the Hubbardovsk rudder shift. Another aspect of mitigating damage, you know, potential damage to the target, is the health pull and the armor. Most destroyers, their armor is nothing. HE will do full damage, it will never shatter. AP will absolutely overpin a lot of them, but it'll stick in some of them too. It's kind of an issue right now, and it's going to be addressed at some point in the near future. But let's discuss the health pull. So we've got the gearing at 19,400, Grozovoy 2,900, Hobrovsk 22,500, Shimakaze at a stinking 17,900. Obviously, the Hobrovsk has the best so far. Z52, 2,300. Sinyang has 18,500, so it's, it's, it's the second lowest, but it's not the lowest. The Shimakaze is very vulnerable to fire. I would highly recommend every single ship pick up Survivability Expert. This skill will give you 3,500 at tier 10. It's 350 times whatever tier it happens to be. And that is absolutely fantastic for every single destroyer. It is a huge percentage of your total health, unlike getting it for a battleship or even some cruisers that are super heavily armored or something like that. You're not going to notice that health. That's literally a shot. But for a destroyer, this could be the difference between surviving a Japanese torpedo and not. 
that's a big not, right? So I am one of those players that believes strongly in survivability expert. I pick it up all the time. And I think it's just appropriate. If you intend to be successful in your destroyer, it's just one of the skills you have to pick up. Another thing that you need to consider is, can I do damage to this destroyer? And that's a big old yes for all of them except for one. There are certain parts of the Hobodosk that have 50 millimeters of armor. Now, 50 millimeters of armor is nothing for AP, but for HE, that will cause a shatter for a lot of different HE. Destroyers will shatter on this part of the ship. So every single destroyer here, even the Hobodosk firing at itself, if it hits this part of the ship that is 50 millimeters, it will shatter. So make sure if you are firing at the Hobodosk, aim for the superstructure, so a little bit up, or aim for the nose, the absolute nose. The 50 millimeter armor is right at the top of the hull and right underneath the command tower. That's where it's heavily armored and that's where it's gonna shatter all the time if you are a destroyer firing at the Hobodosk. If you are a cruiser, there's a potential that your shell's gonna shatter. Unfortunately, that's just how they decided to design this ship. It is very, very strong at range and I don't understand why it has an advantage here compared to everything else. Does that mean that AP sticks in the ship more than it does for any other? Well, no, I mean, AP sort of is weird. It could be one of the ways they balance the game is they fix it. But yeah, that, that's a glaring difference between all these ships is that your shells need to be precisely aimed at the Hobodosk or they will shatter depending on your caliber and DDs will absolutely shatter. So the final thing that's really, really important, detectability. Now I've listed the base and the absolute maximum detectability that you can get on these ships. And right off the bat, you'll see that the Gearing, the Grozovoy, the Shimakaze, and the Z-52 are all within 200 meters of each other. So basically, they all got the same detectability. Unfortunately for Wargaming, they've chosen something that's so close together, you can't really discern the differences. The Hubbardosk has awful concealment, and most players don't even try to improve it. I'm sort of in between. I feel like you can improve it just a little bit so you're not worse than cruisers, but obviously you'll never be good like the Gearing, Grozo, Voishimakaze, Z52, and the Sinyang. The Sinyang will have the best concealment. 5.5 is outstanding. But pretty much all of them play within that 5.9, 6 kilometer range. You have to be very careful at that range. Keep in mind that this is the absolute maximum. This is including the camouflage, this is including concealment skill. This is also including the concealment module. I would not recommend Hubbardosk fully concealed. You're giving up way too much on the rudder as we've talked before. Everything else, I would absolutely go full conceal. Your job is to capture bases and help your team win objectively. As far as the ships are concerned, we've got the Brawlers, the Geary, the Z-52, and the Sinyang, those those guys would want to be close. They want to use their smoke. And for the Z-52, AP on the broadside against the destroyers will do a massive damage. Not so much for the Gearing or the Sinyang. I, I think they really prefer the HE. But AP against a broadside battleship or something like that, it works really well too. You want to make use of your torpedoes, especially if you're a Z-52, a Gearing. A Grozovoy, uh, they're okay. The problem with the Grozovoy is it's very it's very unwieldy close. Its turning is not good, so it's not a gearing in the, the tree. It's more like it's like a gearing and a Hubbardosk had a baby. And that baby was awkward and weird, and that's the Grozovoy. It has okay rudder, okay, okay uh, turn radius. Its torpedoes are okay, its guns are better than the gearing, but worse than the Hubbardosk, so... Keep that in mind. Hubbardos, purely gunboat. Stay at max range. Get 200,000 damage. And don't even blink. The Shimakaze very much has to hit torpedoes. And I think, after playing for it a while, radio location is a great skill for that. Not for setting up a torpedo strike, but for knowing where the closest person is. Because if they get close to you, you're dead. You are the weakest thing out there. You don't want the gearing. You don't want... 
the Hobrosk, the Z-52. You don't want any of that near you. So the radio location just lets you operate in more a co more comfortable environment, and therefore you should be able to hit more torpedoes if you're alive longer. Z-52, absolutely fantastic all-arounder. It's a little bit of everything. It wants to send its torpedoes. It wants to use AP on a broadside. It has hydroacoustic to counter the objective. It feels great. For the Senyang, I can't really say a lot of things about it. Just that it will have radar and it has the American smoke system. Plus it has best in class concealment with deep water torpedoes. So it won't be able to use torpedoes around smoke against enemy destroyers, but its torpedoes are gonna be outstanding against everything else. We'll have to see, right? I hope this was helpful. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll catch you next time.